today we will try to understand the operating system we will try to what it is what's its responsibilities how does it work so while i'm explaining uh, make sure you understand um, all the basics whatever we have covered so far keep that in mind and try to correlate with respect to features or the um characteristics of the operating system you try to correlate with uh, how and uh, what does the processor do okay so operating system like i said in the last class it is uh, nothing but a set uh, it, it's a program it's a very big program which which can be logically divided into certain blocks and uh, these blocks are divided based on the functionality of the program so um, linux kernel as far as i know uh, it is been implemented by writing c code and a mixture of uh, assembly code and uh, the total number of lines uh, it goes beyond 400 million lines <coughs> and uh, it is a single program where uh, the number of blocks that uh, linux kernel code can be divided into Uh, will match the generic uh, operating system so whatever operating system needs to do linux kernel also does so we will keep linux in mind and we will try to understand the operating systems there are so many operating systems out there there are uh, different types of operating systems we will try to cover uh, these uh, topics and see how it fits where it fits why do we do we actually need an operating system and uh, based on that we can decide uh, whether we have to use operating system or we can write everything on our own it all depends right okay let's start so operating system it's a uh, like i said it's a software uh, with which the users are uh, the end user or the uh, users like us can use the entire computer or the hardware of the computer to meet our need to meet our requirement so <clears throat> it's a piece of uh, software which makes the computer hardware work for us so the ease at which the software is um, being uh, presented to the user the more the ease of the software the complex is the operating system as simple as that if you are uh, using the operating system with uh, with some difficulty or with certain effort of understanding what you are doing or what you are trying to understand then the complexity reduces slight so it operating system um, like i said it's a it's a program itself which allows users to run their own programs which is a subset or you your own uh, programs if you want to uh, execute then you can execute uh, through the operating system so let's consider the example that we have uh, used in our last class where we had uh, uh, seen a microcontroller or a microprocessor based kit uh, which had an hex keypad or a, a let's say a bigger keypad and uh, we were writing the program on a paper which is the assembly program and then we we keep uh, 
entering this program this assembly program uh, one instruction by uh, one one by one we keep writing this is assembly program that we are discussing so once we store once we give the input of this program through the hex keypad or the through the keypad these instructions are stored at one place which we discussed as uh, volatile memory or a ram memory and uh, the program had a start a beginning and it had an end or uh, completion of the program and once this program is stored into the ram then we used to hit a key to start the program by programming the first instruction of um, whatever um, program that you have um, copied yes no i'm not showing any program i'm just explaining i'm recollecting the last class okay yeah <clears throat> so um and when we used to uh, hit the execute uh, key button then the um, microprocessor or microcontroller starts executing from the address that you have given and it continues to execute until the end of that particular program so whatever we have uh, the steps that we have taken care to execute a program on a microprocessor based uh, kit or a microcontroller based kit the same operation is done by the operating system okay and um, for the operating system it takes uh, inputs the inputs are coming from two different directions one is from the user so user will give inputs that means it will tell the operating system what he or she wants to uh, do so for example i might open a word um, Uh, software or currently i'm using this um, microsoft uh, presentation software and i'm saying i want the content of the presentation to be viewed on the output device so which you can see is on the on my monitor so i am telling my operating system i want this to be uh, done so i means as a user i am using the software so the software that i am using is an application which is a powerpoint and the application is giving me an interface where i can use keyboard and monitor to uh, input and the output now the word or the powerpoint um, software is then requesting the operating system multiple resources what are the resources that it is requesting it it needs memory so why does it need memory it needs different kinds of memory one is the program itself has to execute as soon as you open or you want to execute this powerpoint so that's a request that the user wants to execute a program called powerpoint that is request number 1 so when i say execute a program so operating system will is given a request or a command to execute a program just keep in mind what you have done for executing in your program in microcontroller so that means you need to first convert this powerpoint application into the binary format so since i have already used uh, installed this software so this is already in binary form. so that means i did not write a powerpoint program okay so this is already in binary form binary or in the form where the the processor can understand that particular application so now operating system will take this particular program now where is this program this particular program i have installed in the in my hard drive that means it is a non volatile memory where i have stored this program now operating system will get a command to execute so as simple as execute command and what is the program so the the location of this particular program in the storage in my hard drive 
Now the operating system will have to read the hard drive. So that is another resource that operating system will have to use. That is my hard drive. It will read it from hard drive and copy it into RAM. That is the memory location where the processor will start executing from. So it reads from hard drive, copies into memory location, whichever memory is free that is available. That means operating system has to be aware of the free memory or free RAM that is available in available with it. So operating system has so the steps I am telling you. Keep in mind what are all the resources that operating system needs and how does it manage the uh, resources. Correct. So it has to first read. The first resource is hard drive. So it needs to know how to read the hard drive and it also needs to know how to store. That means how does it manage the data which you are trying to store in the hard drive. So that, that is the first thing that it does. Since you have installed it, it knows the location where it, the um, PowerPoint application is available. So it has read it. Now on the other side, it has to copy into RAM. Now it has to manage, so it has to know what memory is free and what memory is already used by different applications. Correct? So it will identify through its uh, information that it has uh, stored it will identify where the free ram is available so it will identify and then copy from hard drive into this memory okay is it clear so far yeah okay so now the operating system once it has copied that means it, we have copied, the operating system has copied the, re, the program that needs to be executed in RAM and now what it has to do? It has to program the start address of this particular program into the processor. So it will copy the address into processors, program counter or whatever register that it has to um, configure. It will program and then it will tell processor to execute this program. Okay, so how many resources is operating system maintaining now? Hard drive, then free memory, it copies and then it is also identifying whether processor is free or not. If the processor is busy in doing executing some other program, so what is the program that it that the processor is currently executing is the operating system software okay so let's say that the processor that we are talking is a multi core processor so when what do you mean by multi core processor if it is having two, more than one core it can execute more than one application so what does that mean it means that it needs to also manage and identify the, pro, uh, the processor's state. That means which processor is available for execution or which processor is busy. Okay. So this is the third resource that the operating system needs to know. Okay. So once it has programmed the core of one of the cores of this processor then it will say execute so now that processor will start executing the program called powerpoint okay now the processor will execute that uh, uh, powerpoint pro application and then the application starts executing and you see the powerpoint application execute okay so all this is happening in the background as soon as you just click powerpoint you just see the software running but in that span of time in a blink of an eye these are all the things that the operating system will have to take care if the operating system is slow then you see the powerpoint you, you see the powerpoint executing maybe after one minute two minutes five minutes or maybe after you wake up after sleeping okay 
so if the speed of the operating system is fast that means if it is able to manage all these resources and it is able to run faster your powerpoint will start executing is it clear so far hello okay okay so uh, give me 2 minutes i'll be back just one minute okay so where are we so we were trying to execute uh, so we are now operating system and we are trying to execute on application called powerpoint so um so we have uh, so far understood that the job of operating system is not just give an interface for the user it also has to identify manage identify the hardware what is connected manage that hardware or manage resources so so it will identify right from processor so processor is also considered to be a resource why the reason is whenever a request is made to the operating system or a command is given to the operating system like example uh, there is an application that needs to be executed then the operating system has to identify the processor's time it has to figure out whether this particular program can be executed or not if not how can it uh, how can it handle this particular command so that's the complexity or the level at which uh, the processor uh, sorry uh, the operating system will uh, work upon so let's let's just summarize with whatever we have understood um, so operating system is a software which makes a computer to actually work so it needs to identify all the hardware and it has to make it work provided that the hardware is working if it doesn't work then it the operating system also doesn't work okay so it's running on a working hardware so any question no okay so it's a software that enables all the programs we use so in our example we have um, taken an example of powerpoint so we want that software to be executed so operating system will handle your command so operating system organizes and controls the hardware so what do you mean by organizes and controls one example that we have taken as ram and the processor where operating system is identifying what is how which part of ram is available for use or what is free ram and what is used ram so used ram and free ram so it is organizing the ram which is the hardware and it is trying to manage and maintain the ram then it controls the hardware means it is identifying the processor and its time 
if the processor is available then it is assigning a program for execution so it is trying to keep that particular processor core or the processor itself busy okay <laughs> then the operating system acts as an interface between application programs and the machine hardware so in our example we have taken powerpoint so powerpoint needs currently needs three hard uh, hardware one is the keyboard so that you know the powerpoint can take the, the data from the keyboard and then present it the way you want then it uses the monitor so that you can see what is happening each time you type and the third one is the mouse the mouse pointer as soon as you give input the the application is reading the mouse input and then it is showing what is uh, to be displayed on its interface so it's so the operating system is taking the request from the application in our case it is powerpoint that the powerpoint is asking keyboard input it is asking me to show something on the output and it is also asking me to give the details of mouse or the mouse pointer input is this is this fine so some of the examples that we have show uh, are that we can uh, see today is one of the very um, very much used first pc desktop uh, uh, operating system as windows linux is something which has occupied uh, pc desktop servers what not then we have this unix mac os etc Sorry. Yes. It will be deferred. Deferred in the sense that the request will be taken and if the resources that are required to execute that particular application is not available then it will defer that means it will put it in a queue so that it will monitor all the programs that are running in the system and whichever program is is low priority program or it is waiting for some input from any hardware or external entity then it will defer that program and it will activate the program that you have asked it to execute Can you tell me what is the program? It did not come up means what happened? You don't see anything on... Uh... Okay, so that, that could be because of operating system, that could be because of hardware, that could be because of application itself. So if the application is crashing silently, then also you can see. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah in case of our operating system, um, is this possible that we requested for an application but it didn't come because of an yes. operating system? Yes, it is possible. Because we, we do not have uh, resources available or the queue is full, full or what may be possible. Possible. Yes, possible. Yes. 
so normally um, these operating systems also do some kind of accounting what uh, accounting means uh, of all the resources uh, that are available in the system it will try to show you what is the state of each resource for example uh, windows has this uh, task manager if you open the task manager you can identify which memory how much of memory is available and how much is being used then you can also see uh, processor time whether how much percentage of uh, processor is uh, free or it is busy you can see how many number of processes that are executing all this information you uh, you can see in windows this is possible only because operating system or windows is maintaining some kind of accounting so it is managing all the resources and it is also showing what is the current state of each resource to the user for you for your understanding so you execute something it doesn't work then you can walk through this accounting information and you can identify what is wrong with the system or what is happening to my application which is not executed okay uh -huh. yes please. there is an application with which you can uh, you can monitor all the resources of uh, the hardware uh, like task manager linux also has uh, application to uh, do it normally linux encourages to use command line um, applications so there are so many applications in command line with which you can identify what is currently happening with the system not just windows or linux it will it will be done, it will be available by most of uh, the operating systems mac uh, anything even if you take uh, a simple uh, real time operating systems very simple like uh, uh, free artos or ecos or uh, vxworks or uh, you take you name it you will find the accounting related information you can always get you can get any time and you can find the what is the current state of the system it it actually makes sense right so if the operating system is doing something for you it has to tell you what it is doing and what is available what is not available it can't do anything on its own it it can't be silent uh, thing like our politics, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any, any other questions? Not for now. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thought, they thought uh, operating system is like their manager. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um, just to summarize what does uh, the operating system do um, it, it's controlling and allocating memory this is not the memory that uh, we are seeing here is a generic one uh, in the sense uh, it is uh, volatile memory and non volatile memory so when we talk about non volatile memory then what comes is file system normally uh, the data has to be organized uh, in non volatile uh, memory to make sure that when a write is done so that means all your data that you want to store is uh, stored in terms of files directories etc the structure of this data this data is actually managed by the operating system so the operating system when a write request is done so it is going to allocate memory that means it is going to identify where is the free space available so that it can store your given file so so the memory that we are talking is 
both volatile as well as non volatile so when it is non volatile we normally come to file systems okay then uh, prioritizing system requests prioritizing means it will uh, there it maintains prioritization with respect to application it maintains prioritization with respect to hardware we'll see both sides uh, in a while then it also has to control input output devices that means like for example uh, we have taken an example where a powerpoint is taking input from the keyboard it is uh, using output device monitor and it is also using mouse right all these three devices are not just used by the powerpoint it is also it can also be used by different applications so right now i have i have this uh, powerpoint running i can be executing anything it is this is my console so if i type anything here i can the input and the output is now dedicated to this particular application that is my uh, terminal right the reason is because it is currently active user is currently using this he is seeing this application okay and if i am want to use uh, powerpoint and then i start you know typing something you can see it here you don't see it on the other application or any other application who also need input from the device so so this is what is called as controlling that means it has to know what is the current application that is shown on the output device monitor and where should the keyboard input given to that means which application the keyboard is given to so it has it is far far intelligent than you know than our writing our program that's what i'm trying to say this is to facilitate networking and stuff that means to connect your uh, device to external network so the operating system will also do, uh, do this particular job okay so this is the summary of what it does okay so the diagram just just a minute let me just correct this okay so in general uh, this is the structure of an uh, operating system this is called as a shell diagram what do you mean by shell is the hardware uh, which you see here that's the innermost layer of this shell around which is the operating system the operating system will have to run right on top of the hardware so that it can identify the hardware and it can directly access the hardware and on top of operating system is the system programs for example your compilers or your linkers or your uh, applications uh, that are needed for the operating system uh, to run and then you have uh, the application programs so this is where we reset i mean as a user this is where we use we write the applications or we use the applications that we have installed in our operating system so if you see this the application is written here and then we use this system programs to convert our application whatever language we have uh, written to convert that program into the hardware understandable uh, program or the assembly program and then we use this system programs to generate commands to the operating system so the my current request is to execute my application so i send a request through the system programs i send a request for execution the operating system will take that request identify all that uh, blah 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 whatever it does so it takes copies this application into ram then it programs the processor and then it says okay execute this program so this is called as a shell diagram so kind of yes
So, so but, uh, this question is uh, from application yeah. program. How this data? How this data moves on? Yeah. So if I understand your question correctly, how does the application send a command to operating system for execution? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So this particular communication that you are talking about between the layers, it depends on the operating system. So normally, uh, the operating system will give an interface. Like, like for example, if you take Linux operating system, Linux gives an interface called system call. Okay. So the system programs will execute system calls. For example, uh, if an application has to be executed, then it gives Linux will give a system call called exec. Okay. So exec is a uh, system call that will be executed by the system programs, and it, the in, it needs is the application. So it will give the application and it will call the system call called exec. So that will go to operating system and it will execute that particular program. That's an example of Linux operating system. For Windows, there is another method. So Windows will uh, you I, I don't remember that uh, method, but uh, it is also having a layer, but it can call that layer as a system call layer. Is, is it fine? What do you mean by interrupt based or polling based? Okay. How hard do you feel now? What do you mean by click? You tell me that. Right. So I want to understand the steps. Yes. Yeah. So he, he, I, he, he's asking that when he when send a request, so this is an application which is supposed to come and hardware has to allocate resources for it. So how does it uh, flow? Uh, like his request will go from system programming to operating system or to hardware or it will be like um, an application which is uh, assigned to one of the process or task and then it will task is a part of operating system and then it will go to hardware is that how it is or say yeah. okay so before understanding that i want to understand how do you execute the program so what do you mean by click that, that's what i want to click means uh, you just just run say, say dot exe okay so this is my mac um, OS okay so this is uh, having all the applications so when you say click so if you if I understand correctly you point on to this application and then you say just say click it will come is this what you are asking right okay let's understand this okay so this is <laughs> <There's> so many <laughs> okay so so this particular mac os okay has designed this particular user interface okay and the user interface has certain icons so you can see the icons at the bottom and then there is an application called launchpad so that means the user interface is an application which is using output device which is monitor and it is using this mouse and you want you point on to a particular icon and it shows that it's a launch pad so when you click on this particular icon it will execute this application called launch pad okay now how does this uh, how does all this work so this is the input 
and you click on it so that means the application is monitoring your mouse and you click on the icon so the icon will resemble an application here the application is called as launchpad is it clear okay so the application is currently residing in the hard drive okay so when the request to execute this application called launchpad is given so that request will go as a command to the operating system so that means where is our player that means let me close this one so that means the application called launchpad has requested to be executed so that's a system there's a system program called which is used to execute okay so that is the program which is implemented by the operating system guys itself so the mac will implement program called execute kind of program which is a system program so it will take the application and then it will call the operating system for execution system programs are common programs which is used by application for its process so if an application has to read a data of an input device then it will use the system program for reading the data from the keyboard it every application will not be directly going and reading the keyboard right so there is a system program for dedicated for keyboard so application will request this system program for reading the data from keyboard and this program will ask the operating system that i want data from this input device so this flow happens with every application and these system programs are common programs for all application it's not ids it is the uh, uh, can say apis or the libraries so like for example you write a c program you write a c program and you say print the fence scan okay now this print the fence scan f is implemented as a library which resides in system program layer is it clear all these are assembly language when th so the layers that you are seeing is is the state of execution it's not the state of storage what do you mean by c programs so look look for this particular shell diagram is the shell diagram when the hardware is running that means the hardware is powered on on top of hardware operating system is running on top of operating system system programs are available on top of system programs applications are written and executed so this is an executions diagram it is not a storage diagram or something so when you say execution diagram whether it is application or system program or software it has to be executing in assembly only is it clear hello yeah 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 uh so some system programs uh need execution and some system programs are dynamically linked for example your libraries are dynamically linked and uh, programs like compilers assemblers they have to be executed to complete the task
Is it clear? System programs are generic programs. Normally, these system programs are implemented so that requests can go to operating system. Okay, but it is not um, hard rule that you know application must use the system program. So whatever uh, software that or the programs that are written in this particular system program layer can also be implemented inside the application. Is it clear? Yes means it is clear or yes means it is clear but there is doubt. No, 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 the doubt is keep on getting resolved. Yeah, over the time. This is, this is a basic class. Right, Yes, and no. <laughs> I know, I know why you mean my no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, uh, it is basic because we are trying to understand uh, what's an operating system, but uh, no, because we need to understand more than what the basic says. So uh, you can ask questions, but all these questions will be resolved, um, you know, as and when we uh, complete the class. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Pavani has a doubt. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have library calls and system calls. Yes. So library calls and system calls. So what do you mean by that? If I understand correctly, library calls means uh, you are giving, uh, you are writing libraries so that applications can call your library. Is that correct? And the uh, these libraries are internally calling system calls so that the request that is coming from the application can go to operating system. Is it correct? Yes. So these reside in system program layer. Okay. <clears throat> yes. What is connected to a printer? It's the other way. Printer is connected to the system. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when um, hardware is connected, external hardware is connected to the uh, system, it has to be first identified by the operating system. So operating system has to know that there is something connected. So if you connect a printer, it's for example, USB printer, right? So when you connect USB to the printer, the operating system, that means the USB uh, hardware, will indicate, will generate an interrupt saying something is connected to the USB, okay, USB port. Now the operating system will try to identify what it is, okay. So it will, we will learn how it identifies. For now, let's say it identifies that it is a printer. So it will figure out if there is any driver for that particular printer. Okay, that's a device, that device needs a driver, that's part of operating system, okay. So if there is driver available, then it will trigger the driver and the driver will initialize the device, okay. Basic initialization, reset, blah, 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 it does, so that the printer is available now, 
okay if the driver says that i have initialized to the printer properly it will give a positive signal to the operating system that this particular output device which is printer is available okay now an application is asking for a print okay let's say you open a powerpoint or a word okay and you open your resume or your cv and then you say control p or what whatever command uh, uh, let's assume it is control p is a print command okay now you say print so the what is the application your application is word okay and you are asking the word to print okay so the application is word the command that is given is print command that will go to the system program so that the system program will communicate with the operating system saying this application wants to communicate with an output device called printer the application is not telling that i want to print on an usb output device are you understanding it simply says i want to print on a printer okay now the system program will have to maintain the number of the devices that are available with the operating system so as soon as the operating system has identified that there is a printer available it will give some name to that printer and the system program which is your printer manager whatever you call the printer manager will be this exist layer and the application when it executes the system program will run if there is only one printer it will go ahead and print if there are multiple printers it will ask to print is it clear now the program will identify the output device in our case the printer and it will tell the operating system that i want to there is a data i want data to be sent to this particular device operating system will invoke that corresponding driver which is as it said that there is a printer available and the driver will take the data and write it on the printer is it clear okay yes it's it's a the binary means bits and bits yes so your english language will be converted into bits and the bits are sent to the printer printer will convert that uh, bits into output okay so whatever you are seeing structure of operating system you see all these diagrams everything this is the english language which we understand but monitor doesn't understand this so this gets converted into bits and the bits are presented to the output device output device will show those bits and the bits represent this language you see this language if the bits represent chinese language you will see chinese language so you might have heard this uh, uh, word ascii uh, language right right so what does ascii mean so every alphabets in english or whatever language now that uh, what is it uh, unicode right so unicode defines certain bit patterns for representing certain character of a language unicode supports n number of languages it will say this is the bit pattern this is a this is the present this is a bit pattern present bit pattern present. yeah okay yeah. 
Okay. What do you want to ask? <laughs> Question asked about videos. I don't know what that question is. Uh, we can hear again. Question was. Question was. Uh, if you have. Oh, it is part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just talking. Okay. Okay. So this is the basic uh, block diagram uh, that um, we can uh, see or. Uh, categorize uh, the operating system uh, so this is uh, the lowest level is the hardware so keep this diagram in mind and we are trying to convert this particular diagram into a block diagram a flat block diagram uh, so here we have the lowest layer is the hardware okay above which is the operating system so this complete dotted line that you see is the operating system block okay and then the applications are running on top of this particular uh, operating system so the gap indicates that you know there is the applications are using some interface the interface is called as application binary interface so what is not shown in this diagram is the system programs so system programs actually close the gap so the gap that you are seeing between these two blocks is the system program interface is it clear so the system programs also run at the application layer only that this is the application layer if you divide the operating system into layers so this is the operating system layer and this is the application layer where the applications will run on top of the system program so this is the system program that we can draw let me just take a pen so this is the gap that is closed that is closed by uh, system programs okay <clears throat> so actually use this application binary interface this application binary interface is implemented by the operating system so that applications can talk to the operating system so there was one uh, question asked about you know libraries which are implemented so that the apis are called by the application and inside the apis system calls are called so those system calls are nothing but your application binary interface this is the application binary interface okay yeah Ah uh, yeah, it was silent in the. Yeah. 